Farmers in the Garden. I'm Lynn Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. In our first segment, we're going to discuss transitioning those tropical plants that have spent the summer on your patio or porch or around your pool back into houseplants. Hear what you need to do during our first segment. During our second segment, we're going to share ideas about using garden art in your garden or landscape. Fountains, statuary, garden globes bird baths, and more. There's a rainbow of colorful berries on shrubs that make the fall a tapestry of color. In our third segment, we'll discuss our favorite fall fruiting plants. We spent the last few months telling you to cut back your perennials. Now we're going to tell you it's for the birds. (laughs) Hear what we mean in our fourth segment. What's bugging you? Peekaboo bugs. You see the damage and you know that something's going on, but you never see the insects. We're going to explain what you need to do and when you need to find them in our final segment. So stay tuned and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all, guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva, Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So, next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 AM to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. You know, some of the most popular plants we sell in spring are actually tropical plants. Some flowering, some not. Like, for instance, hibiscus, right, is a big is a big one. Mandevilla, also uh, Boston ferns. Now, it's now going to get cold. And that they're, most of the time, it's outside. And now we're not talking tomorrow because you need to do some things. If, say, you want to save your Boston ferns or you want to bring in one of your um, hibiscus, or you want to transition some of those other plants like crotons into your house, there's some things that you need to start thinking about right now. First of all, which one we give you permission to euthanize those tropicals because they're plants, not puppies. That's right. It's okay. It's okay. Don't feel bad. Um, and uh, 
it's something that that they are cheap enough. I guess I should say. I guess we have some people who don't think they're cheap enough, but <laughs> but but they are a fairly good bargain compared to the size and what you get out of them all summer long. That they're they're you know creating that nice tropical Polynesian fantasy Obvious. gardens, you know. But if you want to bring them back in, you need to start cleaning them up. You need to get rid of any of the insects that may be on those plants because you don't want to all of a sudden bring them inside and then guess what? All of a sudden everywhere you've got aphids growing. You know, there's aphids all over the place crawling all over. You don't want to, they, you know, creepy crawlies you know, <laughs> that have come out. So you've got to start that now. Last week we were talking about this same process with some of uh, how to control insects that – it starts with adults, then it goes to nymphs, which is the immature, young, uh, creepy crawly. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, and then it goes to the they become adults, lay eggs. So you've got eggs, nymphs, adults. Um, it's a cycle, you know. They want to be no. prolific too. You know? <laughs> so, um, the birds, the whole birds and the bees Jeez, thing. Going on now. You need to control all stages and you need to start spraying your plants and elim- eliminate all those insects. Now, we talked on how much we like triple action uh, and it should be in your closet where you keep any of your pesticides for outdoor plants and for indoor plants because it is an excellent organic indoor plant control for both insects but also it'll control some diseases i am like on the fence as far as saying disease control because it's not the best or other bet there are better options but it has disease resistant properties how about we put it that way so you're getting it's insecticide that has a bonus of of a pretty good disease control yeah and where those you can start spraying but it is organic. It has per, a, per, a, the original thrin in it, the permethrin, um, and that where it just doesn't have a long residual. Uh, so you're going to have to spray it a lot. It's not like you just one and done. And it's not what we call systemic. It is not, there's no systemic action whatsoever. Now, Bug Blaster Plus, I like. Okay. Bug Blaster Plus, that it, has a, another thrin in it, uh, it, but this one is not organic. This is created by scientists that work on the same properties of the killing action of the permethrin, but it makes it so that it has a longer residual. I, I love this product. Uh, again, it's called uh, Bug Blaster Plus. Now, if you start spraying, you don't just go ahead, spritz it a little bit. You need to spray uh, with an insecticide on top of the leaves and under the leaves and the stems because there's an insect that's con- called scale. Um, Julio, have you ever seen a boat with barnacles on it? Mm-hmm. Barnacles, yeah. Scale is like a barnacle it's where on. it has legs when they're immature. But when it becomes an adult, it just suckers on to the spot and onto the stems of the plant and just stays there. You need to control that a different way. Uh, You need to, to, again, the Bug Blaster Plus will work, but even something as simple, and this is simple action. The reason why I call this simple is because all seasons horticultural oil, it needs to be done when temperatures below 85 degrees, and it smothers the the insect because it coats it with a fine uh, oil, and it and it's also organic, believe it or not. And it kills in a different way. It doesn't poison it. It has a mechanical smothering effect and kills it that way. So um, it may sound awful, but guess what? It's you with a house full of insects running around, or you cleaning them up the way that you need to before you bring them in. Now. I would alternate uh, these sprays and that way that you get good coverage. And I would do it every other week. I would even encourage you could do certainly the permethrin 
uh, one week and then do the Bug Blaster Plus the following week. And then before you bring it in, you, you do the all seasons oil. You could do it one each week. And if you're changing it up, you're controlling generations. It's not that you're just, you know, it's not you're controlling the insects that happen to be on it now. You're controlling the insects that will develop on it later because the eggs hatch. That's what you're trying to do. Um, but you got to make sure you're doing the top of the, of the uh, leaf and under the leaf and as the stems. Because I know that, they, that we've had uh, where if you've ever... See, I don't think many of our listeners have done this, but like if you grab the trunk of a tree and you hear, you feel squish, oh. <laughs> you found yourself a scale. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not very fun. Yeah, not. But the whole thing is you need to get rid of all of them because you want to have nice, healthy uh, plants coming in and you don't want to have insects that are now going to your healthy house plants. So just make sure that you start getting that done and, and get it. And I'm going to tell you right now, mm-hmm. when you bring them in, they're going to turn ugly. <laughs> yeah. They are used to a higher light condition mm-hmm. and that the fall, there's less light every day. Um, it, it's interesting. If you look at a uh, sun calendar or daylight calendar, that it's less and less, you know, so we're going less and less until December 22nd uh, to where it's the, you know, the shortest day of the year and that. Because of that lower sunlight and your leaves are going to start dropping and that it's got to acclimate and become comfortable into its new environment. It's also, you know, you've got the humidity issues where whether it's air conditioning or or your heat, you're going to have a lower uh, humidity environment than they had outdoors. But they will acclimate and they will acclimate to your new environment uh, and that you just have to be patient you know, have a have a broom and dustpan close by because <laughs> you know, you'll be picking up some leaves. Um, but again, they'll, they'll get there, and it also depends on the type of plant. Uh, if it if it needs lower light to begin with, it should it should do fine. But it's those flowering plants like Mandevilla and uh, tropical hibiscus. They need sunlight. They you may have a, a hard transition yeah. with them. So mm-hmm. don't uh, don't try to Jeez. save them all. You know, why only? Because they're plants. Not puppies. There we go. So if you've got questions about anything to do with acclimating your houseplants from outdoors to in, please call the hotline. That hotline number is 609. No, that's the wrong number. Julio, give that number. 609-685-1880. There you go. (laughs) We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma, a natural-only garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. 
Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects, Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus, Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles, Blue Bottle. A bio-advanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. Bio-advanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. Bio-advanced all-in-one rose and flower care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Garden art. Yes. Can add so much to personalize your garden and landscape, huh, Latin? Because it sure can. It does. Yeah, so if you're wondering what do we mean by garden art, I mean plants are art, but but we're talking about those fixtures that you put in, like say bird baths, feeders, house, bird ha- breath, uh, bird houses, garden globes, statuary, fountains, all of those things that are not plant-based and that they do serve a purpose. Um, personally, in my own yard, I have what we have called the goat girl. The goat girl. <laughs> right. And, it, and it's gone from being a nice statue to having sentimental value. Um, actually, two statues in my yard. The goat girl was my late wife. Um, she loved the goat girl. And this was a concrete statue from Portugal. That at one time Bloomer sold, oof, that's got to be 20 years ago, Ooh. 25 years ago. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but the goat girl is, is you know, c- kind of a running joke with yeah. the kids. and But now it's become something that I just won't get rid of it. And, you know, it, it's it's just it, exactly what you're thinking. It's, it's a three foot high, uh, you know, young woman with, with two goats and it, and it's... And she's the goat girl. <laughs> so, bestseller in Portugal. Oh, well. anyway, <laughs> but in any case, I also have uh, in my own, uh, at my pond, um, I have a, it's a statue made out of zinc that I stole from my parents' house. Well, they're, they're both gone now. So, they, you know, but it used to be in, uh, it used to be in their in their backyard. And I was like, "What the heck?" You know, it's like, "All right, I'm taking it because I'm putting it by my pond." And so um, I, I went and I and I took it and had it rewired, and it's actually a light and a spitter, and it's Poseidon that is a young Poseidon that is has his foot on top of a fish, and that, <laughs> these things are old. That that it. I actually had one of our handymen uh, basically reconditioned it uh, for me, and uh, he looked it up, and he found it's like it's from 1910, wow. 1920, something like that. And it was an artist that specifically did that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And um, and now it's it's my favorite piece. I mean, it, it, I put a dust to dawn light on it, so yeah. it's on when uh, at nighttime, and it's just I just think it's got you know. Family heritage. I mean, you know, they got it long before I was ever born. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking probably 100 years old. At least. Well, anyway, so those types of things, you'd be surprised on, on how sentimental. We were just talking about Laura. Yeah, we were. Laura, Laura's putting in uh, that she, yeah. Laura's uh, here at the station and that uh, she was telling us about a new statue that she just purchased that she's having put into her garden. Yeah. Um, it's 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 something that adds, I guess, a personal touch That's to you yeah. to your landscape. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of times that you'll see where somebody will use like a boulder. It's like, all right, well, here's a big bed, and then there's a big boulder in it, and the boulder just kind of a boulder. Right. You know, okay, it's you know, okay. where yeah. statues, fountains, bird baths, mm-hmm. birds play a big role. Uh, in the landscape. And it's because they both eat the insects that attack our plants, but they also eat the seeds after our plants uh, uh, drop their their flowers. And we'll go into that later in in the segment. So make sure you stay tuned. How about, do you have anything that you have in your garden that's like you would consider an, an art piece? No, I don't have anything like that. Well, thanks, Julio, for your <laughs> I'll keep thing, talking, man. I, I do have one item. Oh, here, see? He said no, but now he does. But what it's not it? really a... What is really, it? It's a rain gauge. There you go. 
That's one. That counts. Does it count? Absolutely oh, counts. Right. <laughs> Brain gauges. I mean, all right. So, so, and like almost on the same thing. Like, think like you get a, a breeze in the garden, right? Uh-huh. Weather vanes are the oldest oh, weather instrument right. used. And that they just basically swirl in the wind, telling you which wind, the, you know, you need to know which way the wind's wind blowing. Blowing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, wind chimes. Uh-huh. And then there's all those kinetic wind catchers oh, that, yeah. that move and, and do different things. Yeah, that's um, awesome. That anything, that, that there are like just posts that are made out of resin that are brightly... Um, Colored with yeah, yeah. with designs and things like that, I, I think I I think that those those are great. But start thinking of adding something like this to your garden, that just to help personalize it. And and it looks like if you just have all plants, it's nice. And obviously, we love plants. Mm-hmm. But adding that little touch of uniqueness yeah. that comes from you, your your family, yeah. you know that it it brings. Something special yeah. to the landscape. Different dimension. Like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. A different dimension. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. And gosh, you know, solar lighting. Oh, solar lighting has become big, so cheap and it actually works. Yeah. It looks good. It I had good. taken, uh, and I'll tell you, I bought them at Sam's Club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> they were on sale for 20 bucks wow, and there was cheap. three uh, spotlights. I jammed a spotlight a solar powered spotlight under my waterfall of my pond oh. so that at night it comes on and it from underneath, underneath. it illuminates wow. the actual waterfall pretty yeah, cool pretty and awesome. it works it works it works wow. no electric oh, yeah no electric <laughs> no electric so get something in your garden that makes it yours you know uh, the plants obviously are, are the biggest part but go out and get something that that maybe Meaningful. Yeah, it it is. It is something yeah. that that uh, that will surprise people when they see different. it. Yeah, a little different. Yeah. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. Dot com And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 AM to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 PM on the Word 953 FM and 1540 AM. On Sunday at 8 AM, we can be heard throughout the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies 1250 AM 
WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. You know, we always talk about flowering shrubs and flowering plants. In this segment, we're going to talk about them another way, that these plants flower, but they're not known for the flower. What they're known for are their berries and the, the brilliant colors of berries and that they get them in the fall um, and that we're going to basically rattle off a bunch of different varieties and that, Aaron, you're going to have on the uh, the pictures of these plants on the YouTube channel. So again, please subscribe to Bloomer's YouTube channel and you'll be able to get this uh, information and see them. Uh, unfortunately, we have our podcast and and radio. It's kind of hard, but see, try to use your imagination. Um, Calicarpa is our first one. Calicarpa is also known as beautyberry. Uh, Julio, how how would you describe beautyberry? Gosh, you know, th- this is a beautiful plant to have. It's like a lavender, bu- purplish, purplish. Yeah, lavender purplish. Probably more purple. Right. It's like deep, it's and like they're like deep. little clusters of berries, berries that that basically form along, along the stem. stem. Yeah, that's awesome. And that they're they're glossy. I mean, they look yeah. like they've been sprayed with varnish or a, <laughs> yeah. or a cover, a clear coat, mm. because they are they are glossy and they almost they almost reflect the sun. Mm. And that they're a tremendous. Tremendous plan. We use them also at Christmas time. Oh, that yeah. we'll put them uh, in wreaths and and in uh, different decorations of fresh plant material. You can do the same thing. Uh, the berries do get eaten by the birds, so keep that in mind, and that you're doing something good for the birds. But their glossy color is just so intense. Their flowers are boring. They're a little white flower that that's pretty insignificant. But it's the purple berry is like outrageous. Yeah. Where outrageous. else do you see a plant like that? All right. Like purple. <laughs> well, that, and again, that's right. It's the purpleness that, that makes it so amazing. All right. Orange. Orange, you glad to see me? Uh, pyracantha, also known as firethorn. There are different types of pyracantha. Uh, they are called firethorn for a reason because they have thorns. Oh, yeah. Um, they are a beautiful white, they get covered in white flowers, but their berries are generally an orange or an orangey red. And there are different varieties and sizes where there's some that can grow uh, as big as, oh gosh, I think I've seen them as big as like eight feet. But uh, they're often used in areas of high crime, to be honest with you. They, <laughs> yeah. they, they're they intimidating because uh, like, you know, you don't want to go through these, you know, one to two inch thorny oh, plants, yeah. but my gosh, the berries that come on them, it, it's a beautiful yes. color. Uh, have you been to a Republic Bank, Julio? You've been by one at least, I yeah, know. Yeah, I've been by one. And Republic yeah. Bank is, a, is uh, you know, a big bank that uh, actually was just bought by Fulton Bank. That's my bank. That's your bank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go Fulton. Uh, but Republic Bank has these in a uh, where they're topiary, where they're actually in a crisscross pattern in their drive throughs oh, wow. Well, that's what I said. Oh, wow. I mean, that's they're beautiful. Yeah. So they you also will see them on a trellis. You'll see them straight up as a column. But the, a lot of times, if you're not doing due diligence with keeping them trimmed, they're going to end up growing back into the oh. bush. So, you know, unless you're dedicated to keeping them that shape, then, you know, just get the regular bush to save you some money. But the orange color is like true pumpkin fall oh, orange. It just pretty. screams it, it's autumn. And it's just a tremendous plant. And that you do get an excellent, excellent flower. White white flower that basically covers the plant. And everywhere that those flower, tiny flowers are, there becomes a, a fairly large berry, probably quarter, maybe, maybe three-eighths of an inch. Nice uh, very pretty. Yeah. Very pretty. And the birds love, love it. it. Yeah. What's the next one, Hul? I like Sverticillata. It's uh, called uh, Winterberry Holly. Winterberry Holly. Yep. It is very common. Oh, yeah. It, it is a native. You'll see Winterberry Holly all through wooded areas throughout our listening area. Uh, they have new varieties uh, that are 
not only orange, but it almost has a blush, almost like a peach color, Peachy. peach color to them. Mm. Um, I still like the red. Oh, There's yeah. nothing better than mm. seeing a winterberry holly in the snow. Oh. The white background with the intense red uh, be berries good. is just is just beautiful. Stunning. And there are different varieties. Now, one thing, we talked about birds and the bees all the time and the winterberry holly. They need a pollinator. So you need to have, uh, first of all, you need to have a male pollinate the female and the female gets the berries. Okay. Now, some nurseries are very smart. And I think that, uh, I think Centerton Nursery does it. Uh, Monrovia Nursery does it. Well, they'll plant in the same pot a male and female so that there's the pollinator is right with it. Not always, but you'll, you know, check to it, to go to, you'll find this, you're not going to find this at Depot or Lowe's or anything like that. Go to your local garden center that they may have that in stock. Otherwise, you need to, like there's a variety called Gentleman Jim. I don't know what kind of gentleman he is if he's pollinating, <laughs> pollinating, uh, yeah, pollinating all the uh, all the female winterberry hollies all around. But uh, you do need to have, and this is it, often a lot of people are confused about that. And and like there's blue hollies where you need to have a pollinator, and that uh, it's something that uh, again it, it's a beautiful plant. It's something I would put along the edges of a of a landscape. I wouldn't necessarily. You know, in the background, because it's pretty much green leaves and the the actual, the, the flowers are not spectacular, but the berries certainly are and that they can get big. And, and there's a variety called Sprite that stays a little lower. That's a nicer plant that you could put in, you know, in the landscape uh, design, but a regular standard winterberry is going to get pretty tall that you want to put that towards the back of your uh, landscape. Uh, your landscape line because you want it to show off when everything else has lost its leaves, oh, yeah. you know, and, and that's what it's going to do. And this is another one. It's absolutely used during holiday times. It's used, you know, all the way from Thanksgiving through Christmas. It's a great plant. And even we have customers that pick them up, put, plant them in their, their pots in the front of the house and then pull them right. and plant them in the backyard uh, after Christmas is over. You can you can bring them in, put them in a vase. That's what I. Oh mean. yeah, you cut them absolutely. Yeah, they're beautiful, absolutely. They're they're great for cutting. Hypericum. All right, who out there knows what hypericum is? It's Saint John's Wort. This is my Bible garden that I'm going to plant. Saint John's Wort will absolutely be in my uh, biblical garden. Um, but it used to be that there was it was kind of boring, but now. There are varieties of St. John's wort where the berries are everything from white to red to orange to green, all different colors. Amazing. And that they're good fall colors, but but also they they add texture to your landscape. And what's amazing is that at the wholesale florists, they sell cut St. John's wort all the time. So it's year round. So Hypericum, St. John's Wort, is something that you should plant. It, it has a great berry, depending on varieties, like the newer varieties that have all of these different colors. The flower is not as spectacular as that yellow giant buttercup flower as some of the uh, other St. John's Wort, but the berries certainly are because they give you a rainbow of, of different colors. And I, they're small enough to where they can fit in the landscape. It's not something where you have to, you know, put them towards where they get real, real, real big. Smaller. Yeah. Now, speaking of real, real, real big, oh, gosh. Southern Magnolia. Yeah. I've talked about my Southern Magnolia, which is about 40 feet high. Uh, they get uh, that beautiful white flower that has that lemony fragrance and that it's probably the flowers or, gosh, they're elite, about a foot apart across. Yeah. And that when they're pollinated – all the petals drop off and they leave what's like a pod. And uh, we have a lot of people coming. I have these cones all over my Southern Magnolia. It's like, yeah. no, they're not cones. It's just they're where the flower bud is left uh, after it's pollinated. What these do is that they turn uh, from a tan color to actually a brilliant pink. 
And then they go from pink and where they actually ripen, the seeds ripen inside that, the local cone, inside there. And that all of these red berries open up and come out. The birds go crazy over, I, I'll be sitting on my porch and all I hear, thump, <laughs> thump, <laughs> thump. And what's happening is that the squirrels are cutting off the seed heads and gathering them up for the fall to go and eat. And <laughs> I hate squirrels, but at this time when they do that, it makes me smile because they're actually working. It's not yeah. like they're eating from my bird feeder. Yeah. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. Double file viburnum. Viburnums are a huge uh, species of plant that have great flowers and great berries. Double file uh, fragrance as well. Double file, great white flower, and then also a red berry. Cranberry bush viburnum. Fantastic. Great foliage in the fall as well as great like that. It, they look like miniature cranberries in clusters. And the actual flower in the spring is terrific. I personally love David viburnum. Uh, they have a blue berry. Very pretty. Very pretty. Lower, smaller, a little different. Also, blueberry is winterthur. Oh, that's, and that, that's a beauty there. And it, it is. And, and actually, actually, that is named for oh, a, an area here uh, in Pennsylvania for winterthur is the garden botanical garden close by you should you should visit get your passport out white flower and then a cluster of a mixture of berries that ripen from like a pink to red to blue oh, stunning blue muffin arrowwood viburnum what color you think those berries are they're blue, blue. they're blue you get double duty on burying plants. You get the flower and you also get those berries. So plant some burying plants in your landscape. Help the birds out. They will eat them. Cut them like Julio does. Bring them inside. Use them to decorate. It's a great thing great to point. do. Don't don't think. You know what pisses me off? Uh-huh. I like crab apples. Oh, yeah. I know you do. But... People have this vision of crab apples from the 1800s that where people take them and throw them around. Yeah. But they're not like that anymore. They're more like berries. The birds eat yeah. them, but the crab apples are just gorgeous. So that's just an honorable mention to a, to a tree, tree form. Yeah, so go out and plant some burying plants. You won't be disappointed. No, you won't. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Do you remember seeing that light green grass growing high in your yard late last June? Well, that was nutsedge grass. It always had a lighter green color and it always grew faster than the rest of the lawn. And you'd find it in other places like along the sidewalk. It is the worst weed in the world. It's hard to get rid of. And what you need to use is Fertilome's Weed Out Nutsedge Control. It will control both yellow and purple nutsedge. Plus over 50 broadleaf weeds such as dandelions, clover, chickweed, and ground ivy. Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control gets absorbed by the roots and the leaves, and within days the sedges are gone. You may even reseed after four weeks of spraying the nut sedge. So when you start seeing those light green glass braids growing in your yard, make sure you purchase Fertilome's Weed Out Nut Sedge Control to kill any nut sedge threatening to invade your nice green lawn. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. 
Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomer's YouTube channel. Bloomer's in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 AM WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. During the fall and winter, the birds' natural food sources are depleted. You can help by letting the flowers of your plants go to seed. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Usually all spring and most of the summer, we've been telling you to go and deadhead, cut back, do those things to your plants. Now we're giving you the permission, again, the permission to be lazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let them go to seed. Like yeah. in studio, we have probably the ugliest plant that we've ever had <laughs> on our <laughs> stu- in wow. the studio. And it's a Gallardia. And if you go to our YouTube page that you'll see it, it uh, please subscribe. Please, we're looking to increase our subscribers. Tell your friends and neighbors. Uh, give us a review. We'd appreciate that as well. We have a Gallardia that is basically going to seed, and, and we've left the seed heads on for the birds. Now, I uh, personally, at, at my home, uh, I saw uh, a, a yellow finch, oh, wow. you know, goldfinch. So goldfinch. Uh, it was beautiful. Oh. And what it was doing is it was going after some of those plant seed heads that I didn't deadhead. And that that's kind of the inspiration from this segment. There's a lot of plants that you don't even think about as far as having seed because they're not necessarily rex. Now, the, the easy ones, sunflowers, obviously, sure. black-eyed Susan, coneflower, but also grasses. Yeah. I, I mean, we have in the studio here with us. I'm just going to pull out the – don't leave it here. Yeah. Basically, this is the foxtail from a Penicetum rubrum, which is an annual, but all of those seeds are available for the birds to eat, and they will eat those uh, those seeds that form. So grasses also, uh, don't, cut, don't cut back your grasses until, again, you're doing your winter pruning. Uh, leave them out so that the birds can use it for not only to feed on, but also nesting material and things like that. Liatris. Liatris is a beautiful uh, flower, but those also go to seed and it has that firm stalk so that your clinging birds can grow and grab that and peck through and feed off of those plants. Yarrow. Yarrow, flat topped uh, flowering plant, anywhere from yellow to red, and I think there's a white variety as well. Uh, those will also um, form a seed head. Coreopsis. Coreopsis, absolutely. Coreopsis, even the threadleaf varieties, um, like, for instance, this, those, the new uh, Mercury series, red satin, all of those will form seed heads that birds will feed off of. And also Joe Pieweed. Joe Pie, yeah. It's not just for butterflies anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it absolutely is a perfect plant uh, to let go to seed. And we're encouraging you to do that just because, like Julio said in the open seg- segment, most of the plants in the wild have been already depleted by whether it's migrating birds or existing birds, they're looking and on the hunt for something to eat because they also, that they're needing to keep themselves warm and they need to feed. Leaving your plants go to seed and not deadhead them, I, I, it, it's essential for, for our birds to get through. And also, it's time to start feeding. Put up your feeder. Make sure you put up a bird feeder. We're going to have a segment Um, next spring that's going to talk about adding a bird feeder to your garden 
because the birds are actually a big help. Um, some people say, "Oh, they're going to eat my strawberries." Oh, it's yeah. like oh, the rabbits yeah. will eat strawberries yeah. before yeah. you know <laughs> before that. <laughs> but it's one of those things where they can help, um, eat, you know, grab some insects and help yeah. be your you know the one that has to grab the potato yeah. beetles, you yeah. know, yeah. And eat the potato beetles. Yeah. But again, let your stuff go to to seed at this point. Um, we're at the, 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 I think we're at last week of, um, of August. So just let them go, yep. let them go. Let You'll go. clean them up when you do your winter pruning. Um, it's not going to affect their root growth uh, or anything. That's good. That's what they're kind of doing. Your perennials are going dormant, uh, depending on what variety you have. Some may already be dormant. So just feed the birds, feed the birds. Feed the birds. All right. We'll be back in the garden. Right after this. Spring is here, and people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. Bio-Advanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. Espoma Organic Potting Mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try Espoma Organic Potting Mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. So what's bugging you? You know, some insect damage, they play peekaboo. You know, you don't, the no see yes. <laughs> And what it is, is that those insects feed at night. So you got to grab a flashlight to find them if you, yeah, if you want nice to. <laughs> you know, it's, when we diagnose uh, problems at, at the garden center, we're often, it basically comes down to, all right, is it insect di- damage or is it an environmental condition that's causing the plant to be damaged? And a lot of times we'll have people bring in rhododendron leaves and that they're just like notches cut out of the rhododendron leaf. And they say, I, there's nothing ever on it. There's no, I don't see it. And those are taxus weevil. Taxus weevil feed at night and they'll come and they'll cut the, like almost like little, little, just little grooves out of the sides of the uh, rhododendron leaf. And they feed at night. So you don't see them. Now there's another problem with them. It's that their larva works and eats the roots of your rhododendron. So if you're getting like a double whammy, the, you've got the kids working in the ground and then you've got the adults That's working on the leaves, you need to, to spray those guys. And we're going to give you details at the end of the segment. Snails and slugs, Julio. I mean, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, have, have, you, have you ever like lifted up a thing and you didn't uh, know it was there and you grab a slug between your fingers? Oh. <laughs> 
It's like, yeah, oh, I've done that. I've <laughs> done that. It's like, oh. You know, but, it's, it but that's one sign that you can tell. It's like if you see slug trails and it looks like an oil slick, yeah, like all through. of a sudden came through yeah. your garden, yeah. that you'll see like these little trails that, that look like they're shimmering yeah. in the sunlight. And that's because slugs have been there or snails that night. Um, they certainly love hosta. I mean, hosta if you've got it's a hosta, favorite. you probably have. You yeah, probably yeah. have them. <laughs> um, and that, that they like those leafy, soft, even soft fruits. A lot of people seedlings. All of a sudden, that like plants have my plants are gone. And it's like most of the time it's rabbits, but it sometimes can be slugs. Slugs you can control pretty easily. Uh, diatomaceous earth works really well. It's yeah. kind of nasty. I mean, yeah. Some of the organic <laughs> solutions are the most nasty of all of the insecticides. Of the- <laughs> <laughs> so, like, like for instance, if you're using diatomaceous earth, it's not like, oh, how nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, what it easy. does is it slices out the bottom of the slug as it passes over it, and it's like a thousand cuts into yeah. it, and it just kills it so it basically bleeds it to death yeah. Oof, what a way to go <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, i mean it's like you're crawling on your belly and all of a sudden you're in, in the middle of shards of glass Basically, that's it <laughs> that's it but it's organic mm-hmm. um there's other types uh, of different insecticides for slugs they're pretty easily controlled um it's just one of those things like anything you just have to do it um cut worms they're caterpillar okay and they feed at night and that they actually will cut young plants, like actually at the stem. So all of a sudden, again, I don't know what's eating my plants. You know, it could be cutworms. Yeah. But again, I don't see them. They feed at night. They feed at night. Uh, earwigs. <laughs> earwigs. <laughs> yeah, do, do you know what an earwig looks like, Leo? Probably like an ear. <laughs> uh, anybody seen one of no. like the original movies from uh, from Star Trek? Star Trek movie. Sam, are you a Star yeah, Trek fan? See. Sort of. What are we talking about? The original, like, when it was Captain Kirk and the original Star Wars movies where they put that bug in Chekhov's ear. Oh, yeah. That's what an ear lo- wig looks like. I think they did it Next Generation, too. It was called, like, Invasion or something like that. Oh, like, really? They did the like, whole ear thing again? Maybe, yeah. Oh. I don't like earwigs, though. I find them in my house all the time. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. right. And that they go after moisture. They'd like, uh, again, they're feeding. They'll feed at night. Um they, some people think that they're beneficial because they do eat other insects, but they also will feed on plants, including flowers, fruits, and soft uh, foliage. Um, easily controlled, not not a big deal. Um, like our our favorite uh, uh, bufenthrin, which is which is the bug blaster plus uh, from high yield, yeah. that works very well. So bug blaster plus very, and all of those um, non edibles do very well. Uh, Spinosad is also an organic that you can put on your edibles that works very well. Um, but I'll tell you that the taxis weevils though, they like that you're going to have to use the bifenthrin or a systemic type of insecticide uh, using a contact first and then using the, the systemic protocol. And again, you need to kill both the adults the eggs and the nymphs. So you need to control three generations. So that means that you're going to have to get out there and, and do a little bit more. Um, tomato hornworms. Those are big things. Look like a little cigar, <laughs> a little green cigar that have these like hooks on their heads. They, they're like, uh, they are, they terrify people in the garden. Now, most of the time when people see them, they're just resting. Because they fed on your plant all night long, and they're just kind of like laying <laughs> out in the there. sun, like taking it easy. Yeah, it's, they already ate. <laughs> they are another uh, nighttime. And here's one you don't think. All right, so we talked about bugs. What what about our actual warm blooded uh, animal friends? Deer, Deer. Oh. nighttime. Yeah. Rabbits, nighttime. Like, now voles, uh, nighttime. So again, yeah. and that moles and voles. How do you know the difference between moles and voles? Voles are vegetarian. Right. And moles are meat eaters. So, again, if you don't see them but you see the damage, they're still there. You need to spray your plants. You need to spray with the right control product. And your best place for information is your local garden center. We'll be right back right after this. (laughs) 
Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomers has a huge flock of feeders, bird houses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, Julio, uh, lots of stuff. Oh. Lots um, of stuff. Tons of stuff. You know, and but also we're giving people off. They don't have to, they can stop deadheading yeah, their yeah. Uh, their plants. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking we've never had an uglier plant in our studio. Than this one. Uh, yeah. This one, you've <laughs> yeah. won. Yeah. You've won. The winner. Yeah, <laughs> I, right I so want to deadhead it just to clean <laughs> yeah, it up. <laughs> That's the salesman in me. Uh, All right. We'll see you next week right here in the garden. We'll see you in the garden.